boys and girls, welcome to Discovery Land. For those of you who are here for the first time, welcome. It's great to have you here. Before we move on to other interesting, exciting things, let's go through what we learned last week. Whoa, it's the first week of December and that means Christmas is coming. We have something special coming up for all of you. Now fix your eyes on the screen right now. I think I found it! Woohoo! Yes! We'll be having an online Christmas special for you and your friends. It will be available on our link tree from December 14 to 25th. Here's what I want you to do. Number one, start thinking who you want to invite to watch this Christmas special with you. Number two, share. The teaser video that you just saw is available on our YouTube, so you can send it to them to invite them. The flyer will be on our link tree as well. Number three, arrange for it. You can start an online watch party or invite them over to your house. Just make sure that you check with your parents about the safety measures. Lastly, if your friends are 7 to 12 years old, invite them back for a Thanksgiving party that will be on December 26th in our Connect Groups. There will be a Best Buddy Head competition and the winner gets a prize. If you're excited, give me a loud shout! Yeah! Now, let's stand to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords!
Yes, indeed, Father, we praise you, we worship you. You alone are worthy of our praise and our worship. And Father, right now, as we return of our tithe, as we give of our offering and our faith promises, receive all of this. And Lord, use it to touch the lives of those who do not know you. We want to pray especially also for those families who may be in need, that you will so provide for each and every one of them. We thank you because you are a faithful God. In Jesus' name, and everybody say, Amen. Now go ahead and sit down. Now put your faith promises, your tithe and your offerings into your envelope or your piggy bank. Today we are kicking off an awesome December Christmas series. This the season. I won't hold you back any longer. Make sure you have your Bible, your journal and stationery. Let's go! Um, I wonder if this is the correct place. Uh, is this table number 247 or 246? Are we supposed to be at 10 a.m. or 10 p.m.? Where is everybody? H Hello! I, I'm here! Oh, hi! So glad to see you! I thought I got the timing wrong again. Come over here. Don't be shy. <laughs> okay. You are always so blur and forgetful. We, we, we are missing one more member. Talking about me? I'm here. Come over here. Give me some love. I miss you guys. I have not seen you all since last December. Yeah, you are right. We only get to gather once a year during the Christmas season. Look at the selfie that we have taken. Uh, it's so dark. I can't even see myself in the picture. I think we need to take picture with the latest iPhone 12. Hint, hint, Christmas is coming. Moving on. So, what's the plan for this year? Well, there is a problem that we need to discuss. So serious? What is it? We have to discuss what's for lunch. I'm hungry. No! Not, Not about, about lunch. lunch. It's our names. They are so hard to pronounce. You are right. We are so cute. But no one seems to be able to call us by our names. What should we do? I've got it. Let's get the help of our very own Discovery Land reporter. We will get him to go to interview three persons to get them to pronounce our names. Shall we have a competition? Sounds good. My name is challenging, but not that hard. I think all three persons should be able to pronounce our names. I think none of them will get my name right. So who will go first? Well, let's settle this in the most traditional manner. Hi everyone, I'm a reporter from Discovery Land Network, DLN. And today... Oh, give me a moment. Oh! I just got a mission. And it is to find out from three people in my office how to pronounce the name of the dog. Hmm. Let me think. Oh, there's a guy over there who's using the laptop. Let's go find out whether he knows how to pronounce the name of the dog. Hi, I'm the reporter from DLN. Could I check with you? Do you know how to pronounce this word? Oh, this word? Uh, it's a... Uh, piss... Pe, piss tie? Pe, 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 Pepsi? Uh, pa, 
Pistoy. I'm not sure actually, so sorry. Yeah. Hmm. It looks like he didn't quite get it. Oh, maybe she can get it. Oh, uh, what, pronounced? Um, pistis? Wow, it looks like she got the right answer. Now, let's take a look. Is there anyone? <gasps> There's a cleaner over there! Oh, this word! This word, auntie, no. This word is pistis, right? I went to school, Auntie No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hi everyone, welcome to our online program. It's so good to have you with us today. And now we have just watched an interesting conversation between three different animals. It's so fun seeing the reporter interviewing the different people. Now, how many of you think that you can pronounce the dog's name? Raise your hands. Come on, don't be shy. Let's review the answer, shall we? Now, the dog's name is pronounced as Pistis. There is a powerful meaning behind this name. And that is what we are going to learn today. Before that, I want to issue a challenge to all of you, especially the preteens. How many times can you pronounce Pistis in 20 seconds? Take a video of yourself doing it and send it to Children Ministry at trinity.sg The winner is the one who can say peace this the most number of times in 20 seconds. Now the winner gets to win a prize. Now get your parents to check out our Instagram or Linktree for the announcement of the winner. We will mail the prize to you. The word peace this is a Greek word that appears several times in the Bible and it means faith. Faith means to have complete trust or confidence in someone or something. In fact, this word can be found in our power word for today. Our power word says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1, it says, Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and being convinced of what we do not see. So what does our power word mean? The author of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 is trying to explain that faith is to have complete trust in God. And because we have complete trust in God, we can be sure of the, pl the future and plans that He has for us. And that is why the verse says that faith is being sure of what we hope for and being convinced of what we do not see. There are times when we do not see the full picture and we do not have the full plan. But yet, the Bible tells us that we can have faith in God. We can put our trust in Him. And it, that brings us to our main point for today. And our main point says, my faith is in God. That's right, our faith is not in anyone or anything but in God. There is someone from the Bible that we can learn from. This person's faith is fully in God. Now, you may be asking, who is this person? For this part, we will need our Bible. Turn with me to Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 38. That's right, Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 38. But instead of me reading this passage for us, let me get peace this to tell the story. Over to you. Hi everyone. Did you learn how to pronounce my name? I'm sure you can right now. Now, let me tell you a story of what I saw that day. 
Mm, I cannot remember the exact date, but I know it happened in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy. I was in a farm in Nazareth, a town in Galilee. God sent an angel Gabriel to speak to Mary. She was a virgin who was pledged to marry a man named Joseph. I was just minding my business, you know, just walking around when suddenly the angel appeared and said, Greetings, you are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. That gave me such a scare. I think Mary was surprised too. So the angel said to her, Do not be be afraid, Mary, you have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. And so Mary asked the angel how this would happen. And the angel then proceeded to explain God's plan to her. Amazingly, Mary responded with these words. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Hmm, I wonder what that means. So who is this person? You guessed it. She is none other than Mary. God sent Angel Gabriel to give her a message. Now, it was not an ordinary message. She was to give birth to a son. And this is not just any other child. He is Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. He will reign over His people. Wow, what a powerful story. I can totally imagine the surprise she felt. Yet, her response is one of faith. We see that in her response in Luke chapter 1, verse 38. He, she says, and she replied, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. And then the angel left her. You see, Mary believed and accepted God's plan for her. And that brings us to our application point. And it says, I will believe in God's plan for me. Now, one of the ways we can have faith in God is by believing in God's plan for us. And that's exactly what Mary did. Perhaps you might be thinking, that it is easy for Mary to believe in God. It is not. Here's a few reasons why. First, Mary was actually quite young when the angel appeared to her. Scholars believe that she was probably around 12 to 14 years old. Now, that's just a few years older than you. And she probably knows nothing about taking care of a child. Number two, she was a nobody. She, she was a young child from Nazareth. Now, where is Nazareth? Nazareth was an unimportant village. And now she must be thinking, why would God choose someone like me? And sometimes we might not be able to see the full picture. You see, just like this puzzle that I have here, there are times where we only see parts of the puzzle and God reveals His plans to us at different points of time. And as such, we only see part of the puzzle. But if we continue to trust in God's plan for us, God continues to reveal His plans to us. And eventually, we will see the full picture. So what does it say? Let's put it together, shall we? Can you see it? It's taken from Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. And it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans 
to give you a hope and a future. You see, if God can have great plans for a young child from an unimportant village, God can have great plans for you too. We will believe in God's plan for you. And even though Mary did not know exactly what was going to happen, and even though she has questions, she chose to believe in God. In the same way, let us choose to believe in God's plan for your life. Now let me share with us a story about what happens when we choose to believe in God's plan for our lives. And this story happened to me. It's my story. And I remember that I had just received my O-level results. And my friends and I, we were applying to go into polytechnic. Now I listed down all my choices and I purposely tried to choose cho uh, courses that are available in the same polytechnic of my friends. And it is so that I will have friends when I go to school. Now several weeks went by and the posting results came out. Guess what? I was selected for a course in Nanyang Polytechnic. It was one of my choices that I had listed down. However, much to my disappointment, my friends all ended up in other polytechnics. And for the next three years, I had to make new friends and attend a school all by myself. It was tough. And, you know, honestly, I did not know what was God's plan for my life at that, at that time. I did not know exactly what was going to happen, but I chose to trust in God and I went ahead to study. Now, all these years, I, I never really understood why God placed me in that course and in that school until this year. See, this year, I finally understood why. When COVID-19 hit the world, everything had to stop. And we could not meet physically in church. And all that I had learned in Nanyang Polytechnic came into good use. It was because of my training and what I had learned in that course, in that school. That is what helped me to be able to prepare these videos for you and I. Now God had prepared me for such a time as this. And that is the power when we, that's the power of trusting in God's plan for our lives. Today, we have learned to have faith in God. And we can have faith in God when we believe in God's plan for us. And if that is your choice today, I want to invite you to stand right now. That's right, let's stand. Place one hand over your heart, close your eyes, and repeat this prayer after me. Dear God, thank you for your plans for my life. Today, I choose to have faith in you. I choose to believe in all the plans you have for me. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Now, perhaps that is a group of you that find it difficult to believe in God's plan for your life. Maybe you feel small and insignificant like Mary. I want you to know that you are precious in God's eyes. He has great plans for you. Now, if that is you, I want to pray for you. I want to invite you to stand. And same thing, place one hand over your heart, close your eyes, and let me pray for you. Dear God, I commit this group of children into your hands. And God, in Jesus' name, I break every lie that tells them that they are not good enough. And I break them in Jesus' name. And I speak into their lives that truly they are loved by you. They are wonderfully and preciously created by you. And I speak into their life that you have great plans for them. And I pray, God, that, that, you, that your assurance will come upon them, that you will remind them that, God, that you, have, that you love them and they are precious to you. And so I bless this group of children. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Finally, 
there's another group of you that we don't want to miss out. If you are a new friend with us and you have never said a prayer to ask Jesus to come into your life, we would love to help you do so. Jesus loves you so much. He came to this earth and died on the cross just for you. He knows all about you and He loves you. And He wants to be your friend. If you want to know this wonderful God, wherever you are, just put one hand over your heart and repeat this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I'm sorry for all the wrong things I have said, thought, or done. Please forgive me of all my sins. Please come into my life to be my Lord and Saviour. Thank you for your wonderful love for me. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. That's wonderful. Now, you are a Christian. You are a child of God. And even though we cannot meet with you in person in service now, we would love to let you know more about Jesus. Connect with us via this email address and come and join us again next week. Till then, see you. Bye-bye. Whoa, what a powerful truth for us to remember. Share with us how you have been blessed by emailing to us. Also, be sure to head over to our link tree to get this week's program summary and time alone with God. Before we end, here's a reminder to all 7 to 12 years old that we have online connect groups after this. For the rest of us, do join us for What's Up Wednesday next Wednesday. We see you. Bye.